Are you a complete beginner to colored pencils or recently started them? Are you confused about what basic supplies you need and what's going to be the best choices? Getting started with colored pencils is actually pretty easy. You only need a few supplies, but there are some things that you need to know about those supplies and the basics of how to use them. Like for instance, the seemingly endless amounts of different colored pencil brands available, which ones are the best for a beginner? The best set of colored pencils you could possibly choose as a beginner would be to choose a set with at least 24 colored pencils, or you could choose a higher number if you like, but it isn't necessary to be able to draw incredibly realistic drawings. Having a set of 24 gives you a good range of basic colors to work with. After all, you really don't need a bunch of complicated mixtures of colors to make incredibly nice drawings. When you are looking for sets to choose, really kind of the better ones to choose are ones that have two shades of grays, two shades of browns, and it is also a great thing for this set to have two different shades of each color, a light red, a dark red, etc. That way you have both value levels, a dark and a light to be able to work with your drawing. Those large sets of colored pencils aren't absolutely necessary, but of course you can use them if you would like to. Some of them do offer much much higher quality than a lot of other pencil brands. So you will definitely enjoy drawing with them as a beginner just as much as a professional artist would. If you're looking for a more narrowed way to try and decide which colored pencils are going to work best for you, a question that you should ask yourself is, do I wanna do really high detailed drawings or do I just want to do generic colored pencil drawing? If you're looking to be doing super highly detailed drawings, then there is certain types of colored pencils that are going to work best for you. Colored pencils are divided into two types of categories. One is oil-based and one is wax-based. All colored pencils are made up of both of those components, both having oils and waxes in their cores. However, the colored pencils that have more oils in them are oil-based, and the colored pencils that have more wax in them, of course, are wax-based. When it comes to drawing super high detailed drawings, oil-based colored pencils are going to give you better results. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't get high detailed drawings with wax-based pencils. It's just going to be a lot easier for you, and you're going to be able to get much finer lines. A lot of colored pencil brands out there don't specify exactly which type of colored pencils theirs are. However, there are some that do. The ones that do, we can thank them for this because it makes it easier to find what we're looking for. You can often find which type of pencils they are in their product descriptions. If they don't list what theirs is, you can try to find certain keywords to try and figure out which they are. Oftentimes, colored pencil brands that have wax-based pencils will describe their colored pencils as being really soft. And just to help you guys out a little bit in your colored pencil searches, I'm going to list a bunch of brands down in the comments under oil-based and wax-based. So you guys can kind of check out any of those brands down there for the specific type of colored pencil that you may be looking for. Now, there are some pros and cons to using oil-based and wax-based pencils. I already kind of briefly went over one of them. The con to using oil-based colored pencils though is that they tend to be on the scratchy side as a lot of people like to describe them, but really it just means that they have a harder core and so you have to apply more pressure to try and get heavier layers than you do with wax-based colored pencils. I will say though that this is not a problem if you are using solvent or odorless mineral spirits to blend your colored pencils with. The solvent breaks down the binders of the colored pencil and allows them to be distributed into all the crevices of the paper, eliminating the need to apply a lot of pressure to be able to get that color into all of the grooves of the tooth of the paper. The con to using wax-based color pencils is that they are crumbly, so you aren't able to keep your pencil at a very sharp point and be able to press hard to get really thick, heavy applications of thin lines, like you can with oil-based colored pencils. Instead, your wax-based colored pencil is going to crumble and break on you. The next thing to get yourself started with colored pencils is to choose the right paper. Now, just as the colored pencil brands out there and all the different kinds of those, there are also a lot of different kinds of paper. Which one's the right paper to use? The way to go about choosing the right paper is to narrow down exactly what it is you want to draw. And oftentimes you do need to narrow it down to the exact subject and the style as well. If you want your drawings to have super high details, then you're gonna wanna go with a smooth type of paper. Smooth type of papers have a smoother surface. The tooth of the paper or all of the crevices are a little more on the smooth side. There's not a whole lot of variation between the high valleys and the low valleys of the tooth of that paper. So therefore, when you are drawing on it, you're going to have a much
much better time trying to get really smooth lines. This is of course going to allow you to have really nice looking fine details. Two of my favorite smooth types of papers are Strathmore Bristol Vellum, preferably if you're a beginner, the 300 series is something you probably would like. And then my all time favorite go to paper right now, which is Arches Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper. The Arches paper has two sides to it. One side is more of a medium texture and one side is smooth. I prefer using the smooth side, but of course, if you want to be doing a lot of detailed backgrounds with lots of plants and other things, then you may want more of a medium textured paper that's going to be able to give you more layers. Which leads me into another type of paper that you could be using, a medium texture. Medium texture, of course, has more texture than smooth types of papers, but it is totally suitable for colored pencils. I will say though that if you plan on using this type of paper, you definitely want to get yourself some solvent or odorless mineral spirits to blend your colored pencils with because otherwise it's going to be quite a bit of work for you to try and get the pencil into all of the crevices of the paper. Blending with solvent solvent actually pushes all of those pigments down into all the crevices of the paper very easily. There is one specific paper type that you want to stay away from for colored pencil drying, and that is pastel paper. It is way too textured to get any nice details with your colored pencils. So you've got your colored pencils and your paper picked out. Now what else do you need to begin colored pencil drawing? Probably the most important tool you're going to need for colored pencil drawing is a pencil sharpener so that you can actually sharpen your pencils. The best thing that you can do is get yourself an electric sharpener. This is going to be a lifesaver when it comes to colored pencil drawing. Just stick it in and boom, it's sharp. No need to spend an entire minute trying to hand sharpen your pencil by creaking it in a manual pencil sharpener. Of course though, unfortunately, you still have to use one of those too. This is because eventually your colored pencils will get tiny, too tiny to even hold in your hand, and you're not going to be able to get them into a big, long electric pencil sharpener without them getting lost in there. Now, how do you go about trying to find a really good quality manual pencil sharpener? There are tons of them out there, and honestly, most of them are probably not great quality. The type of manual sharpener that I prefer for my colored pencils is ones that are entirely made of manual. Metal. That means the actual casing of where you put the pencil into it to get sharpened is metal, as well as the blade is metal. Of course, I don't think blades would be made of anything other than metal. Now, why choose ones that have a metal casing instead of maybe a plastic one? A metal one's casing is not going to warp on you over time, causing uneven pressure with your pencil when you put it in there and ultimately breaking your leads. Instead, a metal one is going to remain exactly the same shape throughout its lifetime and applying the same amount of pressure to the blade, giving you a nice sharpening without any of your pencils breaking the cores. Now, of course, if you're using really cheap quality quality pencils that aren't made well and the cores are uneven, you may still have breakage regardless of whatever pencil sharpener you use. Prismacolor. Additionally, for those tiny pencils, I also recommend getting some pencil extenders so that you can continue using those tiny pencils when they don't fit in your hands anymore. This particular brand of pencil extenders that I use fits pretty much most brands of colored pencils out there. The only thing that they don't really fit very well, of course, is the Caran Dash Luminance pencils because those are a little bit thicker pencils. But you can get some from Derwent that fit them really nicely. The next thing that you're going to need for a colored pencil drawing is some erasers. The kneadable eraser is going to be the best eraser for a colored pencil or drawing in general. You can mold it and shape it to any custom shape that you need, and it also lifts off the colored pencil from the paper extremely well. Another handy eraser to use for colored pencil drawing is the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. This is a very small eraser that allows you to erase little tiny details. It is also a really great quality eraser, so I actually use it for a lot of my erasing, even though they aren't small areas. Now that we've covered all of the basics of the supplies that you need to get yourself started with colored pencil drawing, then you're left with trying to figure out how to use them. There are a lot of different techniques to using colored pencils. Each artist tends to have their own methods, styles, and ways of going about doing all of their drawing steps. But there are a few things when it comes to blending and layering that are somewhat important. Like for instance, there are lots of ways that you can blend your colored pencils, but I'm going to be focusing on the two main best methods. The most common way to blend your colored pencils is by burnish blending. And that is to layer up all of your layers and apply a lot of pressure with your pencils to get the colors to blend together. Ideally, to get 
good effect, you want to use a lighter color over the top of your darker colors to blend them all together nicely. In my opinion though, the best way to blend your colored pencils is by using solvent or odorless mineral spirits. Solvent of course is just paint thinner and you could technically use paint thinner, but it has a strong odor. So odorless mineral spirits is basically odorless paint thinner. It's not going to give you headaches. I've already briefly kind of talked about blending with solvent earlier in this video, but basically it just breaks down the binders of the color pencil cores and allows you to blend all of the pigments into the surface of the paper using a paintbrush. Now, layering your colored pencils and blending kind of go hand in hand. You can add multiple light layers of colored pencil and then blend each of those individually. Or you can also add lots of layers and blend them all together. Both get similar results, but blending small increments layers allows you to correct any mistakes with colors easier because you are adding them all in small increments and can add more or less of a color at a time. And if you mistakenly use the wrong color, you can add more of the right colors to help counteract the wrong color you have down. Whereas if you added it all in with really heavy layers and then blended it all together, you now have to erase what you have first before you can add the correct colors along with whatever colors you might've also needed. And knowing what colors to choose, when to add them, and all the technicalities to to drawing realistic animals is a whole different learning process. And you can learn all about the techniques to drawing realistic animals with colored pencils with my real-time tutorials. Level up those drawing skills of yours by following along step-by-step -step with a voiceover of tips and explanations. There are tutorials for beginners and any skill level. Learn more about the tutorials and sign up at patreon.com slash Jessica Matheny. A link is right here on the screen. Additionally, you can learn more about layering and drawing with colored pencils from the bottom left video. Have a great day, guys. See you in the next video.